All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, you guys, I've got a great guest today for us for the YouTube channel. This is actually a financial astrologer. His name is Raj Chadda. Did I say your name right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. And um, so I got I found him on the internet and he is a he's a really great uh, financial astrologer. And it, we found out that we had a lot of things in common, even the actual like calculations and things that we use. Um, so we've uh, I've been following his work for a little while. And I thought, man, I just want to get him on my channel to talk about you know, the, the Bitcoin and, and he's actually done more stuff with the stock markets than me, but I really am eager to hear a lot of what he's been doing. And I really liked a lot of stuff that I read on his website and his predictions are going pretty well. So you guys, you meet Raj, say hello for everyone. <laughs> hello, hello everyone. <laughs> yes, and so you're a, you're a Vedic astrologer and you actually, as I read on your website, you have a PhD in chemistry, right? Yes. 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 I did PhD in chemistry in 1979. And after that, I did a lot of research in chemistry and then later on switched on to a specialized technique called X-ray crystallography. Wow. And then uh, all of my life, I did crystal structures of small molecules. Wow. I have about 108 publications oh, in reputed journals. <laughs> The number 108 is a significant number. <laughs> so <laughs> the number of beads you have in a <laughs> yeah, yeah, right here. So you know. got so okay, great. So wow, you've written 108 scientific papers. I mean, yes. first off, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yes, um, and and then you, I guess, now that you've been you're retired and and such, so now you've moved into just doing financial astrology full time, huh? Exactly. Yeah, I've been doing astrology right from the childhood, you know, because in our family, we had this atmosphere. My grandfather and my father used to discuss, you know, different charts and what's going on and the you know, transits. So that was sort of background I had. Mm -hmm. And it was easy for me to do two things at the same time, do my studies, do my job and do astrology at the same time. So that's kind of how you got into it, just growing up around it, your father. Exactly. And, yeah, exactly. Exactly. My grandfather was a very good astrologer. He he wrote a couple of books also, and he was well known in, his, in the circles, you know, in the community. What was his name? Share his name just for the... Yeah, his name was Gopal Das. Gopal Das. And um, he used to, he, because he was a school teacher... And uh, he, he was an author of mathematic, uh, books on, on mathematics also. So he used a, a surname also, a Gopal Das, Jeevna Nandi, not the Chada. Chada is our surname, but he didn't use it. Okay. And, and he wrote because at that time, it was not customary to use the surname. You know? Even my father never used the surname. It's only okay. this generation that we started using Chada as a surname. <laughs> ah, okay. And so... Uh... He also wrote astrology books in Urdu. I was reading. Yes. On right. Yeah. Yes. That was the common language. That was the language of the common at that time. You know. Yes, and like the the Lal Kitab is also written in Urdu, right? Which is yes, a major. Yes. Right. There's some cool stuff in that book too. And yeah. has anyone ever translated your grandfather's works into English or anything? Well, I have picked up most of his ideas and put them into my book. Oh, cool. Okay. So you can say that you know. So you're carrying that, the tradition a, on. Yes, most of the ideas, like, like his, his research, you know, he put on his, in his book. I had just taken that and included that into my my books, you know. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right, and so and so yeah. So you've done stuff with the markets, and I was looking at the chart, and I was like, yeah, this is just like a lot of what I do and everything. So tell us, like, uh, you can talk about that, and then also, you know, you had you had some ideas about Bitcoin that you wanted to share too. So you can go sure. right into it if you want. So what do you want to, me to start with? Whatever you feel like, really. Okay. First of all, I did, you know, for so many years, I used the sidereal uh, signs, right. as like most of the Indian people do, you know. But I was not expecting the results I, 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 I would uh, wish, because I'm a sign, I'm basically a sign guy, you know. I, I, I need to see the results. I, I wanted to prove myself, you know. I want to see exactly the correct results, not 
So I just calculated my percentages of, you know, how, how correct I am or how wrong I am. So I was not very happy with that. Same with me. Same with me. I mean, just to be, I don't want to interrupt you, but for the audience, I think a lot of people watching our channel also, yeah. they, I really expected the sidereal to deliver just like it said, yeah, and it exactly. just quite wasn't. Yeah. So, all right, keep, yeah. sorry to interrupt. You. Yeah. Then one night, you know, I just, one day I happened to see a chart, of my friend's son, who was a little, you know, has some problems, physical problems, mental problems, underdeveloped, like Down syndrome and all those things. But when I looked at his chart, he had every planet strong in the charts. You know, the sun was, the, the sun was exalted. Venus was exalted. Jupiter was in, you know, Sagittarius and Saturn in Libra. I could not believe that this chart belongs to this little boy who had so much of problems. Then I had some idea of Lal Kitab in my mind because you mentioned about Lal Kitab. Mm -hmm. What Lal Kitab author did was he used to make a chart on sidereal astrology system, but then omit all the signs and then just treat the sun as Aries. That's it. You will not treat, you know, like Jupiter exalted in the first house as Jupiter exalted. He will treat the first house as the sign Aries. And he did much better, you know, predictions. And he was very well known for because of he omitted this the sidereal signs. So then I tried started checking other things, and, and I happened to see this, uh, I had to have this my stock of uh, astrological magazines, a full mm -hmm. library of you know the, the the magazine astrological magazine published in in, in Madras, mm -hmm. and I had the stocks from 1970s to you know 2009 and 2010. After I stopped getting the issues. Uh, yeah, I noticed that there was a guy who used to recommend this, that please use, who would plead the astrologers, please use these uh, tropical signs and, and uh, use your knowledge of Vedic astrology and then see how, how good you get the results. So, and so I started shifting at that time then. I studied that boy's chart. He had exalted sun, exalted Saturn in the first out immediately becomes for, uh, you know, Saturn in Scorpio sign. The, the Jupiter in Sagittarius, it became Jupiter in Capricorn. Bingo. Venus yeah. in, 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 in Pisces, it became Venus in Ice, Aries. So I had explained everything about his life, his parents, his good things, and we had very, he's financially very strong, you know, mm -hmm. which is nothing to worry about. His parents mm -hmm. are wealthy. Yeah. So then I, you know, started switching and I then tested my own chart, my, my wife's chart, my kid's chart, and it and then I happened to see this software, Kala. You were asking Wilhelm. Gotcha. Uh, Wilhelm. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed that he also recommends the same thing. Then, you know, then I switched <laughs> completely. I also sent uh, those copies of those three articles from that author of Astrological Magazine. Mm -hmm. That like, you, are, you are not the first one to recommend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, also, I was, um, I, I can't say how, how, how true this is, but I was reading how you were also in um, a, the Prabhu, initiating a Prabhupada's tradition and everything. And yes. I was told by another uh, part of person in that kind of tradition that when Prabhupada shared his chart, he was sharing the tropical placements. The reader that read his chart when he was young, he casted it tropically. And if I you do it now, that. you're like, whoa, this only makes sense. Like he said he had moon in Taurus, but it only made sense if you do it tropically. And uh -huh. so that shows that there were even Indians in ancient, like, all throughout that we're actually doing it tropically. Yeah. There is a, there is a, a, a astrologer, Vic Di Carla, I guess that's his name. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of work in this area. He has, mm -hmm. he has a website also. He explained, uh, uh, he gives reasons on the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam. That yeah. even there also it is mentioned that one should use the tropical signs. But somehow this error crept into our system and it's still persisting. I know. And I try to tell them, all of my friends and, and whosoever I know that please change, you know, use tropical signs and use sidereal, you know, Mahadasha and everything that that's fine, you know. Yeah. Whenever you stars, use sidereal astrology. But wherever you need signs, use tropical signs, you know. But they are not ready to switch. I think it will take more time or I more, know, I know more and, persuasion. And there is a slow movement starting, but it's slow and it's small yeah. and, and things take a long time in India. It will be a while before they open up, I yeah. think. But, I but still it's it's steady. <laughs> I plan to start a website you know, after I finish this uh, work, you know, I have one man. I want to start the this website saying that uh, Indian astrologers, please switch 
from <laughs> sidereal science to, yes. to tropical science. And then I'm going to take the charts of important people, the well-known people, and uh, with the, the sidereal chart and the tropical chart, and I will explain them how the, those, those, those charts better explain the life better. So yes. I have so many charts in my mind. So so many things in my mind, it'll come up so slowly, you know. Yeah. And I'll definitely. do them one thing definitely. after that. <laughs> I'm a retired also, guy. I can spend all the time now. <laughs> yeah. And don't you notice also that I, it seems like with these Western astrologers, they're only using signs. So if those were right, they would be so wrong all the time. And then Vedic astrologers, they're using Sanskrit sounds, they're using nakshatras, they're using prajna, omens, like all kinds of other things. So even if the sign isn't showing it, they could still get the answer some other way. Yes. You know, but the it's if they just go with this tropical rashis, it becomes so simple and so clear. Exactly. You know? And you can really exactly. use those details. That's no. my point. You just understand the the attributes of houses, the signs, and the planets, and use this technique of the tropical signs and and the sidereal explanation. You can it becomes a very potent com combination, and you can do really good uh, get good results with this combination. Yeah. yeah. No. Definitely. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Okay. So <clears throat> with the markets, that's how I found him. You guys, I, I noticed that. Wow, what he's predicting for the markets this month is the same as me and other stuff, and and then I that was and then I didn't even know that you were using the same tropical zodiac and all. I thought that was so cool. So yeah. tell us about um yeah, just some of the any market thoughts you have or or about uh, Bitcoin too, if you want to talk about that. Like what are um yeah, what kind of techniques do you find working re really well with the tropical um, for predicting the financial astrology? Because I mean, I need I know there's a lot I could learn from you here. You've been doing this a lot longer than me. Yeah, you see, I have tried tested everything. I have tried uh, to win uh, and everything and transits. And uh, I found that the solar return charts give me better results yeah. because solar return charts tell me that, you know, position of the transits with reference to the parent chart. It's not just transits. I, I think transits don't work in, a, in exclusion. You know, as you cannot say that only transit can influence everything. Has to study, one has to study transits with respect to a parent chart, you know, right. see how the other you can call it natal chart, you know, like uh, what it's uh, referring to, what it's in reference to. Exactly. Yeah. And that you can do, you, you study solar charts, solar return charts. And uh, it's a little difficult. I found it a little difficult to use annual solar return charts because the things change very fast. But I found that monthly solar return charts give me better results. Yeah. So I have arrived at this point now. I don't think I'm going to move too much away from this. That that I use the monthly solar return charts not only to see the direction of the stock market but also direction of the Bitcoin. You know. Yeah, yeah. But you have to have a proper framework to analyze the charts. So just you cannot use the same rules to study the bit monthly solar return charts for gold or for stocks or for Bitcoin because all the different planets influence the different things. You know, for yeah. gold. You so for gold, you might need to study the, the position of the sun and Jupiter. Right. And for stocks, you might need to study the position of the Mars and Mercury and for Bitcoin. So you have to have define, you have to define, define the rules. It's yeah. just not that you set one set of rules and yeah. you can apply to all monthly solar return charts. So that's what I put on my stock uh, on my website, you know, the monthly okay. uh, view. And so like, so yeah, so if someone's more interested in silver, you want to read, you want to look at the moon probably. More. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and then also, do you look at persons like someone comes to you with an individual chart? Because I've been doing this too. I imagine there's a whole lot more I could do with it. Looking at the individual chart, seeing, okay, you might, you don't have a great sun, but your moon is doing great stuff. You should invest in silver, not in the gold markets, stuff like that. Yeah, or, or invest in the cyclical stocks, you know. When your moon is strong, you can understand the ways, you can understand the cyclical nature of the stocks better. So you, you have to study that area. Yeah. You will, be, you will have more success. Yeah. I, the moon is rules the high and low tide, the fluctuations, you know. Exactly. Like it. Yeah. It waxes and wanes continuously. Yeah. Okay. That makes exactly. sense. So then... Um, what have now you what have you found with bitcoin that makes it unique because i've noticed a few things about bitcoin that mm -hmm. uh, for example k2 is a lot more important in bitcoin for some reason it seems to deal with the coded the crypto the hidden you know codes and 
uh, the way that the blockchain and stuff is encrypted and all that, it seems to deal with K2 like hiding it or something and eclipsing yes. it. Um, and K2 was kind of related to like calculations and, um, you know, like mathematics and even like Ganesha was a deity related to K2 and Ganesha is like, uh, has all to do with math and numbers and uh, all that. So I, I was wondering what else have you, I found Saturn also is kind of important for Bitcoin. I don't know if it's because of what, if it's just Bitcoin or all of crypto or what, but you know, we noticed how much that Saturn movement into Aquarius really lifted the whole crypto market up. But yeah, what do you have? Share some thoughts on that. Share us some wisdom. Yeah. No, I've looked at your 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 uh, your uh, YouTube channel in which you have discussed about uh, your Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. I am really fascinated uh, with your understanding of the Vedic astrology, and you you have used Gemini dashas, uh, Gemini astrology, you know, and uh, you have used derivative, derivative charts, sixty and D sixty and D forty. I'm really impressed with that. You, I'm sure Thank you. you have good understanding of the system. <laughs> uh, but I can, you know, contribute uh, my 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 points. You know that you might like to, uh, you might like, you might un understand it better. It may, might make you understand better. I think K two in the first house makes it uh, difficult for people to understand what the Bitcoin is. Ah yes, that's okay. true. It's it's, uh, it's 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 very difficult to understand what K two is. It has no head. <laughs> and, so people find it difficult. Some people think it is good thing. Some people think it is there's no value of, on this. So that is the effect of the K2 in the first house. That makes a lot of sense. I agree. <laughs> and also, this, I use relationship between the planets a lot. You know, in the, this chart of Bitcoin, which uh, you know, which 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 is the same as what you study. You know. The the, the 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 there are two strong relationships in the in this chart. So if you if you can you can put you know the chart of the Bitcoin on the screen. I can actually you know, you know. yeah I can pull that up for us. Um, uh, one, can you see it now? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, so you good, have it. right. Very Kate. good arrangement. I wish I could do all those things myself. <laughs> oh, I'll show. Yeah, well, I'll show you how. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, bad. since since. It's, since I use the North Indian style of style, but uh, of charts, but that's fine with me. I have a chart here. I can read it from here. No, let you me switch it over it. Because, because people... no, if your viewers are more used to this chart, so please keep it like that. All right, because people are always commenting like, "Why don't? Can you please use North Indian and all?" So I was say, <laughs> I I was I brought up I was brought up in North India, so I, that's the only <laughs> chart I find convenient to use. <laughs> but then that's fine with me. You know, I have chart here, so I can do my explanation from here. And your viewer, viewers can use this chart. Well, you know. the thing is, is though you're talking about houses, it does make it more clear with the North Indian. Like you guys see the North Indian shows the houses more clearly. See yes. how K2 is in the first. He makes exactly. a very clear point because people have a very hard time understanding what is Bitcoin? What they thought it was this nerd money for so long, you know, that yeah. they didn't even think it. Most people still don't think that you can actually cash your Bitcoin out into real money, you know, and... <laughs> And also now I'm just to kind of ride off of your idea, the Mercury and Rahu in the seventh almost means that like Bitcoin needs good marketing. It needs good public like press. It needs to have good press. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah you see the, the another advantage of the North Indian style uh, chart is that you can see the centers clearly. The yeah. Central houses are the more important houses than other houses, you know? Yeah, the angles, so, yeah. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so let us start with my explanation of this chart now. Mm -hmm. First of all, I think there is a relationship between Moon and Mars. Moon is in Aries and Mars is in a, a, a exalted and Mars aspects Moon. Any planet aspects, other planet sitting its own house sets up a, establishes a relationship. They call it partial, a recept, a partial reception relationship. Right. Right. So there are four kinds of relationship, conjunction, mutual aspect, mutual, mutual reception, but this is partial reception. So it's a very strong relationship. See the moon Mars is exalted too. And Mars in this chart is Rajokarka because Mars uh, rules right. a center and a trine. Right. So exalted in sixth house. And Thank Mars you. is the strongest planet in this chart. It is exalted and Mars gives very good results in the sixth house. 
because it can kill the competition it can you know mm-hmm. kill the opposition it, it is it, it can fight yes. its enemies yes. so mars is exalted mars is very strong and mars establishes relations with this moon okay so that's that explains somewhat how this why bitcoin is, you know increased in value so fast so so quickly so that is one reason the other one is there is another yoga here in this chart that we call it adi yoga adi yoga means when there are benefic planets in the 6th 7th and 8th house from the ascendant that that yoga is known as adi adi comes from adhikar adhikar means the authority ah, the okay. rightful authority ah, so okay. whenever there is a adhikar adi yoga in a chart you know the person is uh, uh, achieves the position of authority Okay. and and uh, this uh, yoga is right there ah okay i wonder does kala show that should i try to pull up see if kala has that does yeah. does has, has seen the word laganadi yoga here yeah uh, yeah who knows i mean there's sometimes it pulls up them sometimes not but okay yeah all right so and then that's probably good since that would probably have a lot to do with trade and and what since it's near the, involving the seventh and and you know the business aspect of it maybe mm-hmm. yeah uh-huh. okay yeah Yeah, there's a, the other yoga you have mentioned is the Nietzsche Bhang yoga. You have you have mentioned that in your explanation of the right uh, this chart that the Jupiter is fallen, but it is uh, sitting with uh, exalted Mars, so that creates a Nietzsche Bhang yoga. So Jupiter has a lot of good things here in this chart. Okay, and then you also also mentioned that there is a partial deception between Mercury and Saturn. So this right. ruler of the seventh house and ruler of the 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 second house. Right. so that that also you mention and that's it, it explains that whenever there's a involvement of saturn it creates the situation and makes things a little, little difficult so it's difficult to mine cryptocurrency or bitcoins and and there's a lot of complicated algorithms that need to be utilized to to to, make, mm-hmm. to have a cryptocurrency or a bitcoin you know mm-hmm. so that this is my explanation that why it is so uh difficult to have uh, too many bitcoins that's why the price keeps on going up you know so it depends on yeah. and demand now i'm thinking about it now i didn't i don't know if i thought of it then but just that saturn is in the second and the second house so much has to do with like value and your own value in the chart and so the saturn showing that the value will have to increase with time you know like how saturn makes things get better in time you know slow and steady yeah interesting okay. then there is another thing that I, I, which i see you know and and i think it is of of value and that's the rahu in the seventh house rahu in the seventh house gets dikbala the the, the, the strength of direction mm. and rahu in uh, aquarius gets the uh, uh, is is a what i call it you know it's a mool trikona sign Aquarius is the mool trikona sign of Rahu, so Rahu is also very, very strong in this chart. And it and makes sense, you know. And it with being like Rahu being with Mercury just makes so much sense for this whole crazy world to just calculations, be, mathematics, arrange, you know, all com- the new complex algorithms. So all that that is comes from the combination of this Mercury and Rahu. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then, then, then I also notice that the. Ascendant Lord Sun is in the sixth house. Sixth house stands for the you know the opposition, why, why, why the difficulties, the enemies. Yes. And Sun stands for the governments, and Jupiter is also there. Jupiter stands for financial institutions. Mm-hmm. So because Sun and Jupiter are in the sixth house, the Bitcoin has a lot of opposition or a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, I would say opposition yes, from the government and from the uh, from the financial institutions, from the banks and all those. Yes. They don't want to see this. But but at the same time, I see, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because that's the thing we all need to really be aware of is that uh you know, we're in this moving up bull market and there is a point where you might want to sell, you know, knowing when to sell if uh it looks like there could be a point coming up uh I don't want to even say when I think or anything in this video, but there could be a point when government introducing a new coin or things like that could really obstruct it of course and yeah so it, it does seem to show that 
in its natal chart. And remember, if you now, if you, I don't know if you look, thought about it, but I back in 2017, Bitcoin was just exploding. So I don't know if you're following or aware of that. Mm -hmm. And then right when Saturn moved into Capricorn in 2018 in tropical, Bitcoin started tanking. And so it's really, it shows that Saturn can really crush this thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Saturn, you know, and it shows how, uh, like if you study Ernst's classes on the Avashtas, like Sun is starved by Saturn, you know, his enemy, he's in his enemy's yeah. sign. You know, he's, it, like you say, that that's going to show whether you can make it or break it or not. Now, I think about that and I think, okay, but that exalted Mars shows that you can win out against them, right? <laughs> think about this. Exactly. Now, I don't know if you, I know a lot of the people following the markets where it would have probably noticed this when Mars right around when Mars got debilitated in cancer was when mm -hmm. Bitcoin it started went coming down. Yeah, it started dipping in that 12th house. Yes, exactly. Okay. exactly. Yeah, I just wanted to share that, but keep going. I, I like what you're saying. Yeah, I will explain that with the transit of Jupiter. Okay. Why it fell when, you know, in 2017 and uh, I'll, I'll show you that, you know. But let me just continue with this, you know, first the, first the explanation of the natal chart and then we can go into the transits and, 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 okay, good. and periods, okay? Okay, the, the other thing that I think I, I, you mentioned that it, or people also say that it is not certain, they can question why we use this chart because it, it's, it's a, you know, time with the first transaction, but where this first transaction took place. Some people, usually, most of the people use the, the the uh, this thing uh, the uh, your 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 greenwich you know the, the standard time you know zero times on utc they call it you know <clears throat> and i think whenever there is a question about the, the the place or the time of birth one should use the moon chart mm, the people okay. in the western they use noon chart noon means the 12 o'clock chart yes but in, in in vedic astrology we use moon chart that means we take bring the moon to the first house and then study the position of the planets with respect to the moon. That's what we call Chandra Kundli in, in, in Hindi or moon chart in English. Okay. And it also, since it's in Aries, it's kind of natural. It makes sense too, since it's in the first sign. Exactly. Now from moon chart, this becomes more clear why its price has gone up like that. Okay. Okay. Moon, uh, if you make a moon chart, both sun and Mars come to yeah, you can say CL, you know. Uh huh. You can also, if you want, you can do it. I forget how you do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, you go to go to screens, a uh, main screen or any screen. Go to oh, yeah. main screen. You can do the Sudarshana chakra. That way, we'll. You'll no, 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 not this. Okay. All you right. go to screen. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Um, what's? Uh, yeah, go to main screen. Okay, and then you right click here and then you'll get CL. Oh yeah, Chandra yeah. Lagna. Or, yeah, Chandra Lagna, you well, see? That that's is good enough, good. just having it smaller in there. But yeah, that's fine, that's fine. This, this is better. Okay, right. yeah, You can have the in both charts now in perspective. You know? okay. okay, so this, you know, you see the sun and moon and Mars are in the 10th house. And this, both these planets get the, the strength of direction, we call it Dikbala. Mm, yeah. And this Mars is exalted and also aspects its own sign. So Mars and Sun becomes very strong in this chart. Right, I'm also- so Mars is strong, exalted, it's a Dikbala and it's the 10th house is the house of power. Yeah, and then that makes that, that means that when Jupiter and Saturn moved into the 11th, it went into the Gains 11th house. Yeah. Exactly, you can see the transits better here from moon chart also. And, and then, also in this moon chart, there is a Raj Yoga. Uh, you see the Mars is the ascendant Lord. The sun is the Lord of the fifth house and Jupiter is the Lord of the ninth house. Okay, this is a Sagittarius sign here. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is this combination is a, a Lord of ascendant fifth house and two trines and one one center that's ridiculous and, and this Powerful. combination is in the tenth house is another center so this is a quite you know combination of the power of the center and trine houses yeah that's absurdly powerful <laughs> yes yeah um wow yeah 
it's like every the you know you for the audience the trines the first fifth and ninth these are like the dharma houses you know like exactly. your, your nature the things that you're just part of you and and when you have those connecting in a chart it makes you like a king it makes you someone who's just gonna go and and just you can't be stopped yeah um, so exactly powerful okay. very powerful raj yoga here and then the the the, the reception uh, the the mutual reception of saturn and mercury now becomes the exchange of lords of sixth house and the eleventh house. Mm. Okay, Saturn rules the eleventh house, and Mercury rules the sixth house. So it is a exchange of lords of two upchaya houses. So that also shows you to some extent why the 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 price of uh, Bitcoin kept on going between 2002 and 2013. Yeah, I'm sorry, 2009 and 2019 or 2021, you know. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the exponential rise of the price is can be more clearly seen from this moon chart. You know? That makes sense. I see that. I see what you mean there. Okay, now coming to, you know, that uh, the, the transits. Uh, I think I can explain the four-year cycle of, 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 of the price of Bitcoin from Jupiter cycle. Oh, okay. What would you like me to?